This red Renegade has been highly requested to be featured on the channel, but it looks identical to the controller that I tested and reviewed July of last year. That is, of course, until you flip it on the rump or tuchus, and it's the triggers. And I'm triggered it took so long to make this video. Aim Controllers recently hosted a Kickstarter project, a campaign, if you will, which was for these trigger stops, which we're going to be talking about extensively in this video, because this is the best trigger lock or stop system of any PS5 controller. So, of course, we're talking about the Victrix BFG and the DualSense Edge and the Razer Wolverine V2 Pro. And, of course, all the companies that start as a stock DualSense, so Hyper, Cinch, Mega Mods, Hex, Evil, Battle Beaver, just to name a few. Yeah, this is better than all those in the trigger department. But other than just this new trigger stop system, component by component, thumbsticks, face buttons, D-pad, bumpers, this is definitively one of the best, if not the best, PS5 DualSense controller that you can currently purchase. Let's get it. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and mollywop in the back paddles. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've, We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this controller was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it. So these companies make better products over time. And they do. AIM tends to listen to the gaming community and make revisions or changes. For example, the V2 paddle system. Oh my god. But the V3 over here, I currently have the top two removed. The bee's knees and the mule's nips. And the original spider paddles, I guess you could call them the V1 now, but at the time, since it was the only version out, they were just called the spider remap kit, are still one of my favorite rear button or paddle designs for PlayStation 5. And unfortunately, AIM has fully discontinued those. You can't even, there's no back order or anything, they're just gone. My last AIM controller review was July 21st of 2022. I know they did away with the dislike button or bar on YouTube, but you can see over here that video was received incredibly well, except for the 21 disgruntled viewers. I guess they didn't like the cut of my jib that day. Since that video review was several months ago, and a lot has changed here at Gamer Heaven, not only video and audio quality wise, but also more importantly, the structure of my controller reviews, I now break it into categories or segments for each component of the controller. So the AIM DualSense with AIM Back Pro triggers deserves a full comprehensive review, and that's what we're about to get into right now. As for the packaging and included accessories, this is the fifth or sixth AIM controller to be reviewed on the channel, and they've subtly been upgrading their packaging over time to make more of a presentation. There's this little hex pattern or design on the top of the box, which actually carries on to the back of the controller. Very nice. Got some key features and a QR code on the back. If you want to scan, you may do so now. And a little bit more information on the bottom. You will have a USB-C cable inside of this box, as well as your other four included thumbstick caps. Two will be installed on the controller and your other four right here. AIM's USB-C cables, which generally aren't included Included. They're usually a $10 add-on or buy or actually very high quality, 10 foot, braided, lightweight, flexible, aim branding on the USB A and C side. More of that hex pattern down the side and then it tells you on each side of the box, good luck in the game. You don't need luck, you've got the aim back pro in your hand. I'd like to see a little laser cut foam in here or something, but this will do the job just fine. And if the controller you purchase does have a remap chip on board, which I'll say probably several times throughout the video, I do really recommend that you pop for. This is going to be your instructions to rebind or remap those paddles on the fly. As for cosmetics, AIM has about 100,000 different cosmetic combinations to make your controller look exactly how you want it, but I will say this red and black variant looks sick. I don't remember, I don't think I actually picked this one, I think they just sent it out to get the Aimback Pro triggers in my hand for a little testing to give them my feedback. I've had this controller for like almost two months now. It's been hard to not talk about them, but I was gathering my thoughts. Aim's been gathering parts so they can crank out a schnauzer load of these and using it a lot and just keeping my thoughts to myself. But this red and black variant that they sent me out looks spicy, especially since I swapped the black thumbstick caps for red and then added a little control freak cap on this side. That's just spicy. And this version as tested is fully loaded with pretty much all of their features except for mechanical bumpers. These are the standard membrane switches. And this doesn't have the pro grips, which again, I strongly recommend you pop for them because, um, 
slick, but this controller also has the digital face buttons and D-pad, which are pretty much instantaneous to actuate. One millimeter of press, very nice tactile click to let you know, mm-hmm, you hit that button. They're rated for millions of clicks, so they have a tap life cycle longer than a membrane switch, and more importantly than that, they feel better. For $30, you get the face buttons and D-pad. Yeah, well spent in my book. As for the ergos, the ergonomics and comfort on this controller, it's actually quite good because you can remove two, three, all of the paddles if you want. So in essence, that makes it feel just like a regular DualSense controller, which is very comfortable. As you can see, I have the bottom two paddles installed currently, which I think is a very comfortable configuration. I will say having all four of the paddles installed isn't uncomfortable, but it isn't the most comfortable thing in the world. More on this in the rear button section. You can go four paddle and it's still relatively comfortable, but it is much more comfortable with the two bottom paddles. But with the two bottom paddles installed, it is a very comfortable experience because we're, you, we're cutting into the rear button section now. We'll wait on that, but it's comfortable. That's all you need to know now. As for the build quality, there's no large panel gaps where the front faceplate and rear shell meet. Everything feels very well buttoned down. The controller doesn't make any weird creaks or moans and groans when I try and bend it, give it the old flex or stress test. And as far as a quality control reputation, I have heard a very, 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 very small amount of complaints with aim controllers. I do see in my comment section a couple people saying aim controllers are unreliable or they've had one break on them. That is unfortunate, but I will say those complaints are few and far between. And after digging through controller forums, Reddit, etc., I haven't found a whole heck of a lot of evidence that AIM controllers has anything less than a very, very good quality control reputation. And by golly, even if something does go wrong with your controller, AIM is the only company that has a lifetime warranty, which is like insane. Now to the D-pad or direction buttons, AIM does have a $30 option, which will get you a digital or mechanical D-pad as well as face or action buttons. And I do strongly recommend popping for this. If you don't, you are going to have a membrane switch inside the D-pad and face buttons, which is a little bit squishy, mushy. For example, on the D-pad, you push down on right, it lifts up on left. That doesn't happen. And these feel a lot more secure because it is four individual switches as opposed to one D-pad actuator and then a membrane switch over that but also quiet, which is nice. 10 out of 10 for the D-pad. Now as for the face or action buttons, cosmetically there's a lot of customization for appearance, but these actually feel very good because they have those mechanical switches. One millimeter to actuate them, rated for millions of clicks, and they feel fantastic. 10 out of 10 for the face or action buttons as well. Now as for the accessory buttons, so that's gonna be the touchpad, share and options button, the speaker grill, PlayStation button. This is actually the second aim controller that had kind of a wonky issue with the share button where it actually got sunken into the rear shell a little bit further and also feels very, very squishy, almost like when they were reassembling it, pause button over here just didn't get aligned properly or something, and I have to push it in very far to pause the controller. That's kind of weird. Because of that little wonky issue, it's the pause button, you probably don't hit it very frequently in gameplay, except for when you want to pause. This is the second aim controller that's had that issue there. It's so weird. Um, because of that, I'm going to give the accessory button suite a 7 out of 10. It's not game breaking, but it's it's weird. What's going on? Now as for the thumbsticks, analog sticks, or joysticks, aim uses the same swappable caps that a lot of its competitors use and they work just fine. They're held on by friction and as you can see there's a little hexagonal pattern in there and sure enough you take the male end and just snap it in place. Now this version has the PlayStation sticks which are hybrid caps and they do feel pretty grippy. I will say the rubber silicone aim is using is quite nice. Now as for licensed control freak caps the ones installed right now are for Nintendo Switch Red Galaxies to be specific so those definitely work. Now these are white galaxies for PS4 and 5. They fit perfectly. And these bad boys that look like tire tread are for Xbox One and C series. No way, Jose. Too tight would actually damage the thumbstick caps. So those were the PlayStation shaped caps, but AIM also has Xbox shaped caps. So let's test those now. Interestingly enough, the Xbox licensed caps do not fit very well over the AIM Xbox thumbstick caps. As you can see, it's not sitting flush. It's cocked up at an angle and that's just going to mess with your accuracy. You don't want that. Mm, PS4 and 5 caps, a little bit loose and wiggly. It will rotate on you. And Nintendo Switch caps, when I say Switch caps, these are designed for the Switch Pro controller. Loose and wiggly as well. So if you're using Using the AIM Xbox shaped caps. Xbox ones are too tight, Switch ones way too loose. I will say the PS4 and 5 ones are usable, but still pretty loose. Now let's plug this controller to the front of Project Zero and get a couple of measurements on those thumbstick modules. We're here in Gamepad Tester to take a peek at the thumbstick modules and they are pretty well calibrated right out of the box as I move them to and fro on their vertical and horizontal axes and then I stop. Axis 0, 1, 2, and 3, which is going to be horizontal and vertical movement on both the analog sticks, does snap back to 0.00392, which is a very good resting value. 
value. However, we're going to get him a little bit tighter and a little bit more responsive by running some enhancements through DS4 windows. But before we do that, let's get a measure of the circularity, which is going to give us our thumbstick accuracy. So is there any areas of the thumbstick where your movement is not properly being registered? Not with these sticks. One more. Beautiful. DS4 windows, it's time to run your magic. DS4 windows has this spoofing my PC to think it's a 360 controller rather than a PS5 controller. Also, Bluetooth is overclocked to 1000 hertz. And over here in Axis config, change your anti-dead zone from its default value of 0 0.2 to 0 for both the left and right sticks, and then hit apply. Your controller will now be represented as an Xbox 360 controller. No biggie here. What we like to see here is those uber tight dead zones snapping back to 0 0.00002. Very good resting value. Also incredibly responsive as I barely feather over these thumbsticks. They start registering my movement. One more test of the circularity, please. Even better results because we're running DS4 in the background. Welcome back. I've been sitting here patiently while you went over there and hung out with Ether Kevin. Thumbsticks are going to get an 8 out of 10. They were very responsive. However, they're still potentiometer modules, not magnetic hall effect sensors. So these could get stick drift down the road. It'd be awesome to see AIM introduce magnetic hall effect sensors for the thumbstick modules or swappable modules like the DualSense Edge. However, that's not very common with Pro Controllers, at least not yet. I do believe the future of Pro Controllers is going to move towards swappable modules, but moreover than that, because that is literally just you replacing a broken component, magnetic hull effect sensors that just simply won't get stick drift, at least not before another part on the controller fails. For example, the battery, the face button stop pressing in, or something is going to crap out before you get stick drift, because it's literally just magnets breaking connectivity that are registering your movements, not potentiometer sensors that need cleaning, and then these carbon strike plates that are getting scraped down all the time. It's a mess. It's an absolute mess. It's what we've been using using for years for controllers. Maybe time for something new, perhaps. As for bumpers, AIM does have a $30 option for digital mechanical switches for the bumpers, which sound and feel, well, you're not gonna feel them, but they sound like this. Very quick to actuate, very responsive, very tactile, very clicky. They feel great, but it is one of those upgrades you can kind of skimp out on if you're trying to penny pinch because the bumpers are already very short to actuate. And this isn't a must have mod, but it definitely is a nicety. I'm giving bumpers eight out of 10, repeat an eight out of 10. When I stopped going off a five point tier system and moved it to 10, who knows? But now we've got more control in the judgment. As for the triggers, so far the only PS5 Pro controller that lets you use adaptive triggers and trigger stops is the DualSense Edge. However, in its third mode, you still have a lot of travel a lot of dead-end take-up or slop. That is not a case on the Aimback Pro. With the trigger stops off or deactivated, you have that full linear squeeze, maybe modulate the throttle and brake in a racing game. Come on, baby. I'm milking the hell out of her right now. I got two hands on her udders. I'm milking her for everything she's got. Everything you got. Everything you got! Everything you got! Everything you got! You ain't cheating, you ain't racing. Dale Earnhardt said that. But you start playing a third or first person shooter or whatever game you want those trigger stops on, click them on and they are very easy to actuate. And now you get a digital mouse like click with one millimeter of squeeze that isn't very loud and most importantly is freakishly quick to actuate. I have tested the digital or mechanical triggers from all of its competitors and I will say these have the perfect balance of resistance and also quickness to actuate. These are great. And the ability to play PS5 games with the adaptive triggers, those motors getting stiffer or lighter depending on what's going on on screen, but then you start playing a competitive FPS where you don't give a damn about that, boom, you can click them on. That's just, ugh. Now as for the AIM V3 rear paddles, their third version or iteration, there's a lot I like and a couple things I don't. Don't like. Let's get the cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement out of the way, and then we'll move on to everything that the took us to this controller does right. There is a stupid ass release clip right here that does get broken in over time to where you don't need to press this with a little pen or pencil, but in order to remove the paddles, you need to press down on this while simultaneously rotating this little ring or dish. Now again, that little button gets broken in over time, or you can just break the little fucking thing off because it is so stupid. I would prefer to have no tool and just be able to remove my paddles like this. You're never at any risk of reaching behind your controller, grabbing the center dish, squeezing it, turning it, and then popping out paddles. So you don't need that little release clip. It's stupid. Let's do away from that. Now I'm not going to talk about the original V1 Spider remap kit because they're discontinued and you can't really find them anywhere. I'm not going to talk about the V2 paddles because I hate them. One of the beauties of this controller is that you can swap between V2 and V3 paddles. Two completely different shaped or design paddles will work perfectly with this controller and any future versions, V4 or 5, will work with this system as well. I will say the V3 
Vs are a big step up from the V2s, which I simply did not like. But there's still a little bit of room for improvement, and that is going to be with these top paddles. These bottom paddles, I, I, I ain't got shit to say. They're damn near perfect. They're almost flush with the rear shell. Very nice tactile click to actuate them. They are pretty noisy, I will say that. If we could reduce the decibels a little bit, cut down on the volume, that'd be kick-ass. Now, the top two paddles are a big step up from the V2, which were practically unusable. However, these need to be quite a bit larger. If those could be extended out to right about here, that would give you more of a place for your middle finger, because let me just clarify this right now. This is one of those rear paddle or button controllers where you're going to cover all four of the rear buttons with just two fingers. Your middle fingers are going to cover the bottom paddles and the top paddles. Now, you can hold it like this. That's not very ergonomically comfortable, and I don't believe that's how most gamers hold a AIM V3 controller like this. You probably hold it like that. It's getting really hot in here. So many lights on me. Air conditioning cannot be turned on because it's loud. It'll degrade the audio quality. All you're going to be hearing is can't have it. Sound like a Toyota Supra banging through gears. 2JZ. So the bottom two paddles are covered by the tips of your middle fingers and the top two paddles are covered by this middle meat section of your middle fingers. Well, as you can see, if I tilt my hand at this angle, this corner edge of the paddles is actually digging into my middle finger. Now, granted, it's rounded off, not sharp, so you're at no risk of cutting yourself or hurting yourself, but it simply is not comfortable. There's a bigger issue with these top two rear paddles, and that is that you kind of have to lift your middle finger off the bottom two paddles in order to roll off and hit these top ones, thus meaning you're not really covering all four paddles anymore. You see what I'm saying? Like, that that's weird. Some other angles for you, so you can see not only my, my pit stains, but also how I'm holding this controller. God, it's hot in this room. So with the next version or iteration of these rear paddles, I would like them extended out quite a bit further to where you have a place for your middle finger to actually snugly fit in there instead of just brushing up against the side. The thing I really do like about these rear paddles is that you can rebind or map them on the fly. You don't need a software program. You don't even need to plug into your console, technically. Power on the control with the PlayStation button, then hold down both of the rear paddles for around five seconds. Cut some lights in here. You will then get a flashing red light around the touchpad. Then you're going to hold down one of the four rear paddles as well as a face button, D-pad, whatever you would like linked or synced up with that rear button. The red lights will flash three times and then go back to pulsating slowly to let you know you're still in remapping mode. So that's cool. You stay in remapping mode, you do all four of the buttons, then you hold down the bottom two paddles for about five seconds and you exit remapping mode. It actually happens quite quickly. So I'm going to be giving the V3 paddles system a 7.5 out of 10. I do like that it's removable, swappable with the V2 if you like that shape more, and any future versions or shapes will work with this design. It looks cool, it feels great, but a couple of things that would bump it to the next tier would be quieter switches because they're pretty damn loud, and also those top switches are ergonomically not very comfortable, to the point to where I'm actually running this as a two-rear paddle recently. <laughs> Time to run X input test to get our refresh rate or polling rate, which is going to give us our stock input lag or delay. Rotating around on the left stick in a circle, we're getting about 4 minutes seconds on a 250 hertz stock clock, so exactly what we've come to expect from a DualSense controller. Also, perfect results here, zero outliers, so good test, good test. Jitter very low, and the minimum and maximum can't get much closer than that. That's a consistent connection. Let's overclocker. Over here in the Lord of Mice overclocking software, we are recognized as an HID compliant game controller, if you expand this child name. Just to confirm that, unplug the controller, it will disappear. Replug it, she'll pop back up on me. This controller is not overclocked for an estimated six milliseconds of input lag or delay. It's actually closer to four, but no biggie. Let's go ahead and overclock her. Default to 1000. Tick this box. Click install service and hit open. Go ahead and unplug. Replug the love bug. And now the HID compliant game controller is overclocked at 1000 hertz for an estimated one millisecond of input lag or delay. Let's test it. Mm -hmm. So the test finishes incredibly quickly. You're not going to have to sit there rotating your finger for very long because we are overclocked, meaning the PC is receiving a thousand inputs very, very quickly. Check this out. Bam. As the board is not polling rate locked, we did get under one millisecond of input lag or delay when wired to PC, 0.9 to be specific. The website's pretty handsome and easy to navigate. You do have drop downs for different platforms, PS5, 4, and Xbox controllers. They do not currently make Switch controllers, but if you're on mouse and keyboard, they do have mouse pads as well as gaming mice. And they do also have PS5 side covers or plates, which I have reviewed on the channel. But as far as picking up a DualSense, you do have three options. The limited editions over here are pretty sick because they ship within 24 hours and they have lowered their price. These were over three dollars a pop, but now if you skip on the carrying case and the USB-C cable, which you probably got one laying around, you're looking at $220 plus. I do have an exclusive partner discount code, Stallions at <laughs> checkout, but $220 before my exclusive discount code is actually incredibly reasonable and on par with 
pretty much all of its competitors. Now, when I say competitors, I am looking feature by feature. So these do have trigger stops. However, you cannot turn them on and off. They are permanently digital mouse-like switches. Make sure you ain't playing no racing games or you don't want to use those adaptive triggers. It's not the Aimback Pro like I have over here where you can turn them on and off. Now, this is very important. This would be a non-recommend for me if these were not remappable rear paddles, because even if you're somebody that uses the same button bindings 99% of the time, maybe you're playing a different game or you're sharing this controller with somebody else that wants to deactivate the rear buttons or bind them to something else. And these paddles are remappable on the fly, so no software required, no PC, no console. Well, I'm assuming you have one of those or you're not really using the controller. These are also going to have the aim grips, which are some very soft, supple, rubberized grips that feel very good. And you are going to have aim sticks, which are swappable thumbstick caps. They're not magnetized like the Elite and the Razor. Rather, they're just held on with friction and pop off like that. And as for this tab, the pre-designed PS5 controllers, this used to only be controllers with no rear paddle. It would be controllers with no performance modifications, but cosmetic or appearance modifications like a hydro dip front shell. Not the case anymore as this can be purchased in either basic or pro. However, pro is more expensive than if you're just purchasing one of the limited editions over here. But I want to take a deep dive into their builder, which is by the way, under revision. And I will be doing a full tour of their new builder in the near future because they are adding a different layout basically. So starting with a stock DualSense controller, I always find this amusing that a stock DualSense controller, which is about $65, $70 on Amazon, is going to be more expensive if you bought them from one of these custom controller companies, but I don't think anybody's doing that. So we're going to spec out an AK-40 Kevin special over here, meaning no cosmetic or appearance upgrades, just the nitty gritty performance upgrades like the remappable rear paddles, swappable thumbstick caps, and the trigger stops. Digital buttons are a $30 upgrade, and I do strongly, I don't know if I put enough emphasis on that word, but I do very much so recommend this option. $30 replaces the actuator for the D-pad and the four action buttons, so you only have to press them one millimeter to actuate them. More importantly than that, instead of having that mushy, squishy membrane feel, they're a very clicky, tactile, mechanical-like click, yet they're almost silent. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. I do love them. So these are stock DualSense thumbsticks, so they're not going to be swappable. It is a $2 upgrade in order to have swappable sticks. That seems like a no-brainer. Take my $2 and let me swap my sticks so I don't need to spend a fortune on Control Freaks. Um, we'll make these red, just for the heck of it. Ah, that's two dollars for each side so four bucks i strongly recommend steering away from these led rgb well it's not rgb but these led glow thumbstick bases because you cannot dim them turn them off change the coloring and they're not in sync as you can see this thumbstick's one color this one's another color just super disorienting again you can't turn it off and I, yes i strongly just just skip on that now you have three height options for the playstation hybrid thumbstick caps and three height options for the concaved xbox thumbstick caps keep in mind these are swappable so you could switch between the sizes and the different thumbstick shapes. We'll go with a low left stick and a high right stick. And as for the rear paddles, I absolutely recommend going the remappable route. So that's a big old expensive upgrade, but that's the key feature of this controller. Add it. The Aimback Pro is these rubberized grips, which feel phenomenal in my opinion. This is a $32 upgrade. However, I do strongly recommend popping for the rubberized grips because this model does not have the rubberized grip and it is slick as snot because unlike a stock DualSense, which has little PlayStation face buttons or symbols, which provide a little bit of grip or stippling. This doesn't have that texture. It is just smooth plastic and it is slick as snot without getting those rubberized grips. So do yourself a massive favor because you're just going to have to go on Amazon and spend $15 for the control freak rubberized grips and stick those on once you discover that this is an oil slick. Then the smart triggers over here, which is a $39 upgrade that is going to be a one millimeter squeeze. And those are going to be digital mouse like mechanical switches. So not the aim back pro trigger stops that we're talking about here today. Aim will be getting the parts that they need in March ish so they can start pumping these out because the demand is massive for this trigger stop system. People are talking about it, including myself. I'm talking about it right now. The demand is high. They need to make sure the supply is also high as well. And right now they're just trying to get parts to build these shits. Smart bumpers. This is a $32 upgrade and I would recommend just passing on it. It does add a mechanical switch to the bumpers, but you don't have to pull the bumpers very hard to actuate them anyway. And I have no complaint with stock membrane bumpers. So I'm going to save my $32. It's $5 to remove the vibration motors, which are actually haptic feedback motors. I do have a video linked in the description below as to why you might not want to remove the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers of a DualSense controller. If 
if you're using it to play on PS5. So I'm going to leave those in. Now for a whopping $72, you can guarantee that in three days you will have your controller built and shipped out. I am going to live life dangerously and wait patiently in the corner. How long is the current wait time, the lead time when building one of these controllers? Great question. It fluctuates all the time. I'm going to go ask my representative. Uh, never mind. I didn't even need to waste the man's time. There's a page for it over here. At the bottom of the website, they have what's called knowledge base. And if you come over here to order status, one of the questions or FAQs is current build time. And they do break it down. If you get one of those pre-builts, which are called limited editions, it takes 24 hours, one day to build and ship out. But if you're going through the builder, you're specking out a custom, which I recommend you do because you can fine tune and get exactly what you want. 14 days is the current estimate. But again, that is just an estimate. All these custom controller companies, it fluctuates substantially. But I will say 14 days is much better than the two and a half months I had to wait for my Battle Beaver. And then as for accessories, you can add a $9.90, let's just say $10 USB-C cable. You probably already have one, so let's skimp on that. And the charging station, I did review Ames charging dock or station on the channel. <laughs> I, I'm, I don't think it's worth $20, to be perfectly bluntly honest. I'm just going to not put that in my cart. Now, AIM's promotion does change from month to month, not only the threshold of what you got to spend to activate the code, but also what that code does. But for April, it is going to slash $50 off any order of $199, let's just say $200 or more. So let's go ahead and remove $50 off this. But the beauty here is you play around with these components and get yourself a controller that's as close to $200 as possible, and then you activate my discount code and it slashes $50 off, and you're spending a about $150 for a balls to the wall pro controller. Hmm, something else to note here. If you are all about the original AIM spider paddles, which again are my favorite, the V3s are a close second, but the originals are just the best. The PS4 controllers, the DualShock 4, are still using the original spider paddles. So if you love this design, you can get a DS4 controller that will have these. Another note that just simply needs mention, they do have a Gamer Heaven faceplate if you are a massive fan of the channel. And I will say I'm a little bit biased, but that looks pretty darned sick. Now it's like a quick look at each of these options, these drop downs to see exactly how much customization is available from AIM and also how expensive we can rack up a controller if we're going to slap on every available option, even the silly ones. We'll start with this Ragnarok over here. Mm -hmm. Need a little trim piece for sure. Let's go. Yes. Well, that blue doesn't match up really. Now bullets don't really go with the hack and slash theme of God of War, but that's okay because it's the most expensive option. $16 for either gold or silver bullets. D-pad color. I want that metal silver to match the face button. Thank you. Share and options buttons. Blue, blue, blue. PS short, PS tall. For $22, you can add text to your gamer tag. And for $25, you can add a custom logo, which will look exactly like this. I do like the logo or icon. However, the actual text, my gamer tag over here, I was kind of PO'd that the red doesn't match like at all. And when you get up close on it, you can tell it's a pretty low resolution, low quality print on there. I'll just pass on that. Sick. Lovely. You can add logos or text to the right or left palm grip, as well as the touchpad. So trying to rack up an astronomical bill or tab, we're going to, we're going to fill all these out. Ooh boy. So before any promotions or discounts, $415 for everything that you can strap onto this controller. Let's make it a little bit more expensive. Let's expedite the shipping. 72 hour build, please. And I need a USB-C cable because I don't own one. Give me your charging station as well. $516. So a little over a PlayStation console, the real console, not the digital only version fat price point. Again, that's with every option possible slathered on there. Most likely you're not going to throw everything that you can at this thing. I will say I would be slightly more inclined to spend that kind of money on a controller if it carried a lifetime warranty, which it does. So it's cool. A couple things I want to point out about AIM controllers. This one right here is, is massive. It's thick and it's girthy. Lifetime warranty. As of now, this is the only premium pro or custom controller company that I have witnessed with my ocular cavities that offers a lifetime warranty. The only thing that doesn't cover, and this is a big one, unfortunately, is going to be stick drift because AIM doesn't touch the modules. That's just Sony's stock thumbstick modules. So I kind of understand their justification that they don't want to offer a warranty on a part that isn't theirs, but everything else that they touch, so the remappable rear paddles, the clicky trigger stops, the hydro dipping graphics, maybe one of the face buttons stops clicking, that's all covered for a lifetime. You don't see that in the pro controller world. In fact, these companies are trying to shaft you on the warranty more often than not. Actually, just to go off on a quick little mini tangent here, it's actually not only acceptable, but we get excited and clap over a six month or one year warranty on pro controllers. That's pretty gross. 
lifetime over here. That's all I'm going to say with that. I will say AIM does have a slew of cosmetic or appearance options, specifically 100,000 combinations that you could really make or your own. Well, that's just graphic. I'm going to have to go to confession now after looking at this faceplate. I feel dirty. The next one for you patriots out there, this might actually matter. Designed and manufactured in the US of A. You do love to see that. Also something you do not see with most pro controller companies as they are sourcing the majority of their parts overseas because it's cheaper. The last thing I'm going to touch on is that these are officially licensed Sony and Xbox controllers that they start with. AIM is doing it correctly. They're not going to get shut down because they're not doing anything janky. They're authorized vendors of disassembling dual synths and Xbox series controllers, giving them the business and then putting them back together. As for the verdict, in the near future, I'm going to be comparing all the PS5 controllers I own. They're going to be lined up from this end pretty much all the way down to the other end of the desk. That is going to be a very long video. It's going to be time stamped with chapters. All the big boys are coming out to play. So Cinch, Mega Mods, Hyper, of course, aim battle beaver all the, the the titans if you will are coming out to just beat the ever living shit out of each other and i'm going to be quite shocked and appalled if aim isn't ranked very highly on that list if not taking the gold taking the crown and just to put a little bit of ammunition behind that claim lifetime warranty only custom controller company doing that and yes to mention it once again that doesn't cover stick drift which is one of the three most common points of failure in a controller i have been very lucky in that aspect other than my two defective elite core controllers which came out of the box with major thumbstick issues. One was stick drift and one was, it felt like there was gravel or sand in the module and the stick would actually stay in position. So it was like you had cruise control. You could just put your character on autopilot and step away and your thumbstick was jammed forward. Other than those two janky controllers, I've only experienced stick drift in two controllers and I've been playing heavily on controller for years. So it is a completely randomized case by case basis. I have disassembled and repaired hundreds of controllers with stick drift for friends and whatnot. But me personally, you know, taking care of my controllers how I do. That even matters. I think it does a little bit. And also, I guess just my gameplay style, whatever. I've only had stick drift in two controllers in about 20 something years of playing on controller. And God forbid you do get stick drift. You're not completely screwed. I do have a video linked in the description below where I walk you step by step how to remedy, potentially completely get rid of that stick drift. And if it's a little too heavy for just some software programs, you can always disassemble your controller and clean off the outside of the potentiometer modules or actually take apart the housing and clean the potentiometer sensors. And if they're completely fucked at that point, you can desolder the modules and get new thumbstick modules. But that is a big old pain in the ass, I will say. Mini stick drift topic that we just went on a little veered course on. Back on course with the AIM V3 with AIM Back Pro triggers. We're going to shorten that. It's the AIM Back Pro. The best tactile D-pad and face buttons that I've felt. Better than razors because those are pretty noisy. Yeah, those mechanical switches feel fantastic, but these feel just as good, but they're quiet. Also, the razor buttons are rated for a tap life cycle of 3 million clicks and AIM's is 10. The AIM back triggers are the best PS5 triggers in the game currently. And since AIM is using that swappable rear paddle system, jumping from the V2 to the V3, any future shapes they come out with or different paddle designs, the V4, 5, whatever, they're all going to be compatible with this back system. And since the paddles are removable, if you want to take off two or take off all of them because you're playing a game that doesn't need them, you can do that. And if you're just looking for performance features, skipping on all the cosmetics and use my exclusive discount code, you can get around $150, $160 for the rematch mappable rear buttons, the rubber grips, and a couple of the other recommended features. That is going to do it. Drop in the comment section below your opinion of AIM controllers, as well as all of these custom controller companies, and I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below to get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace